It is gonna be a good one. How to get <laughs> how to get lean for summer. My channel for those of you who don't know me my name is Lily Sabri I'm the girl who is supposed to upload five times a week those of you who have been following me for a while I'm sorry a hot minute since I have uploaded a YouTube video I feel really bad it's kind of one of them where I was like should I address it but at the same time I've been getting a lot of you guys messaging me on Instagram like where have you gone so yeah, I just want to say sorry, it's been a while. I will tell you kind of why I've actually had the flu for the last three days, but that is no excuse because I stopped uploading before that. So basically, I am in the wrong. I am sorry, but I hope today's video is going to make up for it because today is going to be a good one. How to get, <laughs> How to get lean for summer. Okay guys, so I have to admit I kind of fell on doing this video a little bit by chance. I was on my Instagram stories earlier on and someone basically asked me how have you managed to stay so lean throughout your injury? So I've been injured now for three months. It's been a pretty bad injury. For the first four weeks I was pretty much bed bound. I was on crutches. I wasn't able to walk. I am now back training but it's pretty restricted. I can't do the cardio that I used to do. I can't do all the high intensity hits. That basically got me thinking is this a topic that you guys want me to talk about a little bit more. I put it out to my Instagram family and it literally went crazy. It appears that you guys want to know my tips of how I have achieved and maintained a lean physique now for nearly three years. Oh, Teddy. So this little man has just woken up. He was fast asleep. He woke up just as I started filming. Yes, you did. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my knowledge on how to achieve a lean physique, period. Now, I know in the title, it talks about getting a lean physique for summer, and that may well be your goal. And this video will certainly help with that. I do want to emphasize, guys, that my ethos, everything I believe in is that health and happiness is a lifestyle choice. This video is about teaching you ways that you can become more lean in your body and you can sustain that. And we have to bear in mind that lean looks different on every body. That means we're uniquely beautiful in our own right. But what that does mean is that we store body fat in different areas on our body. And that's totally normal. As well as that, we all have different goals. We all have different physical goals, mental goals. And I want to embrace that. I want to encourage that. This video isn't about saying you want to become body shape lean A. And you're going to achieve that by applying these points. That's not what this video is all about. Point number one training now that's a pretty broad point so i'm going to break it up into subcategories a that definitely wasn't an a a is versatility within your training so what i basically mean by this is mixing up the type of training that you're doing not only is this going to decrease the chance of boredom, it's also going to mean that you're more compliant with your training because you're not waking up every single day thinking that you have to do the same thing day in and day out. Now there are benefits to doing the same thing because it means that you can track your progression, but it's also super important that you mix up the type of training that you're doing. What I mean by this is you need to be mixing up resistance training with cardio, which is a little bit of a sticky subject and we're gonna come onto it in more detail in a second. Change up the type of cardio that you're doing. You can be doing your list training, you can be doing your HIIT training because all of that is burning calories, which again, we're gonna go on to in a second. As well as your resistance training, which is your weights, and your cardio, you need muscle specific training. Now this is something that people don't talk about all that much and I'm saying this from a physio point of view because I've seen it from my own experience and also all of my experience working with athletes. If you have a certain goal, whether it's sports performance or whether it's aesthetic, you need to be working the muscle groups that you're aiming to strengthen. Now to put this simply, for me, I wanted to have the visible effects and the physical effects of a stronger core. I wanted a flat stomach. I wanted a strong, toned, flat stomach. Hands held high, I'm willing to say it out loud. Now, as I said earlier, you can't spot reduce fat. You can't choose where you're gonna take your fat from. If you could, I would be taking it from my thighs and I'd be putting it right here, but we can't do that. So instead, we need to be burning calories, burning fat, 
all over our body and then targeting the areas that we want to strengthen. Now I'm not saying I know what your aesthetic goals are, but I know for a lot of the women that I've worked with, they want to strengthen their core, their glutes and their legs and Pilates is amazing for that. The fourth and final type of training is active recovery. Recovery is so important. It's something that we don't talk about enough for our muscles to grow, to repair, for us to physically see results and basically prevent ourselves from getting burnout we need to have our rest days. And some of them will be active, some of them will be pure rest days. Which brings me on to point 1B, overload. Now the overload principle is something super, super simple, but I think it's something that's not necessarily spoken about enough. Basically, you need to be increasing the intensity of your workouts as your body adjusts to your current workout regime. To summarize, you are challenging your body. The best example of this is you do the same workout five days a week for six weeks in a row. Not only are you gonna get bored, you're also gonna burn out because you're not having any rest days. And third and finally, you're not gonna see any progress. You will hit a plateau. So you're looking to change the intensity of the workouts, the time that you're doing them for, and the type of workout that you're doing. Which brings me on to point 1C, follow a plan. I can't describe to you how much this is gonna change your life. And it sounds really silly, but this is coming from first-hand experience. This morning is actually a really good example. And I'm actually a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I was like a victim of this this morning. I've been sick for the last three days. And finally this morning, I felt like 80% better. And I was like, I want to be active. I just wanna get in the gym. I wanna get moving. I've been pretty much couch bound for the last three days with the flu. It was 7.15, I chucked on some Clothes. I didn't shower, I went straight down to the gym, and I think I wasted about 30 minutes just faffing around. What did I even do? I mean, I did my prehab warm up, and then I was on my phone, and then I did some glute bridges without any real activation. I mean, it was just a total shambles, and I kind of had to shake myself and be like, okay, pull yourself to the side, Lily, check your plan, and start again. And the worst thing is, I have a plan written. I just didn't follow it. So my point is stop wasting your time just thinking I need to exercise and then doing it pointlessly and instead either write your own plan or follow a plan from a professional that you trust. It's so important that you trust this person. If a plan is written well, it will apply all of the principles that I spoke about before. So if you haven't already done my 30 day program, please do check it out. It's totally free, 30 minutes a day with me every single day for 30 days. And if you have done it, please comment down below and let me know how you found it. Point 1D, rest and recovery. Please, please, please don't forget about the importance of rest. I see this all the time. Regardless of your goal, your body will only repair and you'll only get muscle growth if you're allowing it time to rest. So if you have any specific questions about rest and recovery, please do pop them down below. I think that will be a whole new vlog on that. And it is something that I've been promising you guys for a while. I'm really aware of that. I'm sorry I haven't done it, but I will do it if it's something that you still want. So please let me know down below. Okay, on to point number two. Nutrition. Oh my gosh. This is how much I've written about nutrition. Yeah. Now a lot of this stuff with nutrition links back to the training. And I wanted to talk about training first of all, because to be honest, the easier part to talk about nutrition, I could talk about for days. So I'm gonna try and make it chunk size. Point number two, A, two words, calorie deficit. All over social media recently, and I'm so thankful for it. All basically comes down to one fact, to lose weight, to lose fat, you have to be in calorie deficit. What that basically means is you need to be consuming, so taking in less calories than what you are burning. When this happens, your body starts to use fat as fuel, which means you are burning fat, which means you are eventually gonna lose weight. Now I wanna be super, super clear with this, guys. Please do not drastically drop your calories all of a sudden. Number one, you're not gonna get the nutrients you need. Number two, you may well lose weight, 
but it won't be sustainable because you'll probably put it straight back on again because number three, we are going for a lifestyle change. Initially, you may well need to lose weight, lose body fat percentage to achieve your goals of a lean physique. You will then get to a point where you are in calorie maintenance, which is where I am right now and where I'm super happy. I'm in this space. I am not starving myself. I have never starved myself. I eat very, very well. I exercise. I'm happy, healthy lifestyle. Please don't go down the yo-yo route. Diet yo-yo route, honestly, I will be so unhappy if any of you start doing that. I just wanna be so clear Calorie deficit needs to be gradual, it needs to be slow, it needs to be sustainable to a point where you are in maintenance. And this comes down to the 80% nutrition, 20% training. Earlier on in my Instagram stories, I was a little bit, a little bit bold, I put it out there and I said that I don't agree with that. Now, a lot of questions have been stemmed from this. A lot of you are saying, what do you mean? Do you mean it's 100% nutrition? Is it 50-50? All I can say, guys, from my own experience and from working as a physiotherapist, as a trainer for nearly 10 years now, it needs to be a 100% lifestyle choice. You need to want to be healthy. You need to want to be fit. You need to want to feel great. This isn't about getting ready for your holiday, which is fine by the way, and then going on your holiday and drinking a whole bottle of wine every single day while you're there. That's taking us back to our yo-yo. Now I'm not saying you need to cut out all treats. I'm not saying you need to be the healthiest person on the planet. Trust me, I am not. I had packet noodles and chocolate last night. I'm hormonal and that is fine. But what we're trying to do is achieve something that's sustainable. So if you are looking to take this really seriously and if you are wanting to drop body fat percentage, drop your weight to get to a stage where it's sustainable, please go slow. Now bear in mind, there's two simple ways that you can be in calorific deficit. You can eat less and you can train more. If you do both heavy at the beginning, you're gonna make yourself sick. Burnout, you're not gonna have enough fuel in the tank to sustain that physical activity. Point two B is eating little and often. I myself eat around five small meals a day rather than three large meals. Now I know you're probably thinking, does that mean I cook five times a day? No, that brings me on to point to C, which is meal prep. Now, those of you who follow me on Instagram, particularly on stories, will see that I am a massive fan of meal prep. I'm a little bit of a geek. Bottom line is I love cooking, and I know a lot of people don't enjoy cooking, but the one thing I can relate to is a lack of time. It's really difficult to find time to cook. And that's why meal prep is so beneficial because you can basically cook in bulk, whether it's at the weekend or one or two nights a week, and then either freeze it, put it in the fridge, and that is your meal sorted for the week. Remember, nutrition does play a big role. It might not be as much as 80%. I personally don't think it's 80% because I don't eat healthily 80% of the time. I'm a little bit lower than that. I do have my unhealthy snacks. And that's part of being a human. That's part of being able to maintain a healthy lifestyle. As much as you can, I would strongly recommend that you meal prep because it will really help you to stay on track. If you guys would like to see a video on meal prep, maybe something like five healthy lunchbox ideas or five of my go-to breakfast meal prep, let me know down below. I just made them up on the spot, so please don't judge the titles. They may well be changed if you could think of a new type. Point D. Is it D? I think it's D. Yes, get enough protein in your diet. This is a big one. Now, ladies, I am talking to you because I used to be the same. I used to think if I have extra protein in the form of a shake, it's going to make me put on weight and it's going to make me bulky. Yeah, I used to think that. Please don't judge. That was a long time ago. Now, if you are that lady that is thinking that, I want to clear this up for you to bulk, for you to significantly grow muscle. Number one, you need to be lifting really, really heavy weights. And number two, you need to be in calorific surplus, which is the exact opposite to what we're doing. That basically means that you need to be taking in more calories than you're burning. Nearly said that the wrong way around, but you know what I mean. So you don't need to worry about bulking. The goal is to be having one gram of protein Protein? Protein. <laughs> one gram of protein per kilogram of your weight. 
So I am just short of 10 stone. I don't know what that is in kg, but whatever that is in kg is roughly how much protein I should be having. I don't eat meat. I haven't eaten meat for a long time. I do have fish, but maybe three times a week. So for me personally, I have to supplement my protein. So I use Optimum Nutrition. I'm gonna show you now. I don't know if you can see this. Oh my gosh, that's the most awkward hold ever. I only use their products. I strongly recommend the plant-based protein, which is what I'm using at the moment, but also their gold standard way is literally a go-to for pretty much everyone. They are industry leaders. They are the best you can get. I'll actually link a discount code down below for them as well if you want to purchase. But what I also to show you guys, I just quickly grabbed this from the fridge, is one of my like go-to snacks. So if you are having cravings, if you're wanting something super sweet and there is a chocolate bar there, and there's a healthier option. I know you're gonna want the chocolate bar, but a really good snack alternative, natural yogurt mixed with some protein powder and some berries. So I normally have blackberries or blueberries. Really good antioxidants, packed full with nutrients. It's just a really nice snack idea. I thought I'd chuck that in there. I got a lot of those snack ideas and I feel like I can't kind of fit it all in one video. So if you want more, I guess I need to start creating more content. E, lots of fruit and veggies. Packed full with fiber, packed full with nutrients, really good for your metabolism, and also they're generally low calories. You can eat a lot of them, you can feel really nice and full, they're really good for your body, and you're not actually taking up too many calories if you're going for that calorific deficit approach. Next up, water. I say this to people all the time, and they're like, yeah, I think I drink a lot of water. I'm kind of guilty for that. Oh, you just tried to down it. Done. If you can, over two liters a day. Try and stay away from processed drinks and alcohol. If you wanna take this seriously, guys, you need to decrease the amount of alcohol that you're having. I really don't drink much alcohol at all. When I first met Alex, I never drank alcohol, and since meeting him, he's tried to like introduce a little bit. He's Australian. Hey, all my Aussies out there. I'm not saying that you're all alcoholics or anything. Well, that was a broad statement. G, cut out the processed foods as much as possible. We've kind of already touched on that. Fresh fruit, fresh produce. Make from scratch as much as possible. I'm determined to give you guys more recipe ideas that are just easy. H, this is my favorite one. Carbs are not the enemy. That is my second to last post on Instagram and I'm so glad it went down so well. I love carbs. I feel like carbs have been victimized over the years, particularly when I was growing up, when I was looking at like inspiration from a lot of like magazine models and it was all about being stick thin and all I ever wanted was for my legs to be thinner and kind of that non-athletic shape. And now I feel like we're growing wiser to the fact that your health is your wealth and it's super important to look after your body from the inside out and with that, I feel like carbs are having their day again, but there are still some misconceptions. And that doesn't mean that I want you to go off and eat high sugar, processed carbs. No, we need to try and stick to the whole grain. The whole grains, the fruits, the veggies, they're really good carbs, they're high energy. By having enough of these, not too much, but enough, it's gonna help you achieve that sustained goal of having more of a lean physique, if that's your goal. I'm guessing it probably is if you're watching this video. Point. Three, we made it, woohoo. Fall in love with the process. The one thing I can say to you guys is, I am the healthiest and the happiest I have ever felt, period. I have a horrible injury, but I've managed to heal that injury so much faster than I ever thought I would. My mental health is in a good place, and honestly, I can literally put pretty much all of this down to the fact that I live a healthy lifestyle. And it sounds cringe, I sound like a geek, but actually, I really don't care. I love my lifestyle. I love being healthy, I love the fact that I'm not restrictive if I want naughty foods, which actually isn't that often, but if I do want them, I don't deprive myself of them, but I've now kind of taught my body to crave healthier things, still sweet, but a healthier alternative. But it's just had such a massive impact on my skin, my body, my hair, my energy, my happiness. And I'm so determined to spread that to you guys. And I know it won't be for everyone, and I'm not saying everyone wants a lean physique, but what I am saying is your health comes from the inside out. For me, my body confidence comes from feeling great. And the only way I can feel great is by looking after my body. And I really hope that message resonates with some of you guys. And I know it's a journey. 
and there's times when I don't feel so healthy and you will be exactly the same. None of us can be up here the whole time, guys. I'm happy being here and being relatively stable and that's what I wanna spread with you guys. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me quickly grab Ted's. If you do have any questions, please do pop them down below. Please show my channel some love if you're enjoying my content. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the share button, subscribe. Oh my gosh, I'm asking a lot of you, but if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to do that, I'd massively appreciate it. Thank you for supporting me as always. I've missed you guys so much. Oh, that was a big yawn, baby. Okay, bye guys. Love you.